Good afternoon. Welcome once again to our video blog from the Russian International Olympic University. Today I'll be speaking with Professor John Beach of the Coventry University, United Kingdom. He's a visiting uh, professor here to the uh, Russian International Un Olympic University. Uh, professor John Beach is interested in uh, the ma mismanagement of, of football, uh, the management of uh, events and uh, sponsorship among many issues he's uh, an award-winning blogger as well you should check out his blog uh, and um, uh, good 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 afternoon professor well good afternoon and thank you very much for welcoming me uh, it's a pleasure to have been in in the classroom with you throughout this week uh, i'd like for us to talk about the uh, the growth of the premier league uh, it's the most it's the biggest uh, football league in the world and uh, most exciting for many people who follow it all over the world. Do you see this growth continuing? Uh, and what 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 would be responsible for uh, for the lack of uh, growth if you were to to say something if if it wasn't to grow anymore? Well, that's a very interesting question. I mean, if I think back to the middle 1990s, I can remember talking with colleagues and saying. How long can this continue? There's growing broadcasting rights and sponsorship money. And we were all of the opinion, oh, at some point it's going to stop. Um, and we've been saying exactly the same thing for, for 20 years. Um, so is the growth going to continue? Well, all the indications are, yes, it is. I think it's going to change a little bit. We can see in broadcasting, I think the television money is, is going to reach a maximum. Um, because it is facing competition from internet broadcasting. Um, so that will bring down the price of the uh, television rights, but it's not going to affect the sport, because what money they lose by reduced television broadcasting rights, they will make by selling rights to people like um, Google and YouTube. So overall, I don't see it changing. Sponsorship money, I think that's probably going to continue. Um, the only thing I think that would stop it would be a large scandal, not a scandal with one club, um, but if English football had a scandal that affected the whole of football, gave it a bad name, um, if, if there was a kind of Tiger Woods effect um, on the, the Premier League, then that probably would affect sponsorship. I've no reason to think that will happen, but of course it could. Thank you for for this. Um, with with the growth of the Premier League, you also realize that many uh, smaller countries uh, who want to also grow their leagues, they are finding it difficult because their fans have been uh, are sold on to the Premier League. How do you see this? Uh, smaller countries, emerging markets try to grow their own. How can they do this in the face of the, you know, the mammoth presence of, uh, of the Premier League? And also, how uh, tough is it for local fans in England, seeing how much the, the league has become so international, and it seems it's, they're taking away the, 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 the joy, the, the domestic values they get. Just It's been enjoyed so much by international audiences, much more than, than the crowds at home. Okay, that, that's really two questions. I think that the first question, uh, how are other countries going to fight back and, and get interest back in, in their football leagues? A um, very interesting example is South Korea, where in South Korea you can watch English Premier League, Bundesliga, you can watch um, Italian football, Spanish football, French football, Dutch football, um, and this has had a very negative impact on Korean football because fans are much more likely to be a fan of Manchester United than they are of their local team. It's actually having a bad effect. Um, and things are getting better if you go back a, l a long time. If a Korean player wanted to make it big, then he would be looking to play in the English Premier League. Um, back 20 years ago, he would have a problem, how do I become known to English clubs? And he would go to play perhaps in Norway because the scouts from the English clubs were not visiting Korea, so they'd never discover him, but they were going to Norway. So if he could make it in Norway, there was a chance he would then be chosen by an English team. So there are ways of fighting back. 
but I, th I think the big problem is is how dominant the English Premier League and the other four, how dominant they've become, um, and it's going to be very difficult for any other league to to rise up to that kind of level. Um, I suppose China is the one place where politically there is a drive to increase the, the um, importance of Chinese football, um, and that's why so many Chinese owners are appearing in the Premier League and in fact in Europe. So that that's the only way perhaps they'll be able to fight back. I'm trying to remember that yeah, the the second the part was the ownership of the of the local fans. I mean oh the, the ownership going foreign and the players going foreign. And I the fans <sighs> feeling uh, that they are losing like control of their own clubs to 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 foreign uh, interests. Well, I think that's more of a problem. I think in terms of actually having foreign owners, I think many fans welcome foreign owners simply because they welcome rich people. They're not bothered what nationality they are. As long as somebody comes along and puts in lots of money, they're happy. Um, regarding foreign players, well, they're getting star players. So, again, most fans are not worried by the fact it's no longer a local uh, crew and no longer local players who are playing. As long as they're doing well, as long as the money's there, in general they're not worried. Where they do get worried is when it goes wrong, uh, when a football club collapses. So for example, the club I support, Portsmouth, we had four or five foreign owners who in the beginning put some money in but then they got bored or they didn't have enough money. Uh, they didn't manage it very well because they were putting money in, the club had risen higher than it should have been, to be honest. It was in the Premier League, it was winning the FA Cup, um, but there wasn't enough regular money coming in from match day tickets to make this sustainable. And in the end, when the last foreign player, uh, foreign owner went, we were in serious trouble. And the club was only rescued by fans like myself banding together and buying the club with our fan-owned club. And I think that's a model that, that will increase in numbers. It's never going to be very big. As long as there are enough rich men around, no uh, club is going to become owned by its fans. But when it gets into serious financial trouble, then it's rescued by its fans, it's fan-owned. Certainly in Portsmouth, I would say there is a definite increase in pride in Portsmouth, a definite increase in identity with the club. The, the players are still very mixed and many foreign players, um, but there is a pride in the club. If you look at the crowds we're attracting, we're now down at level four in League Two. We've got easily the biggest attendances of anyone in that level. Um, we are competing in terms of how many thousands watch every game. We're up at championship level. So we've got good revenue streams, and hopefully we will climb back at least to the championship. Yeah, well, that, that's uh, uh, good and uh, hopeful news for, for, for fans of Portsmouth. Uh, but the, the Premier League, as it's grown, and also you see costs, ticket costs for fans, it's uh, disenfranchising fans. Do you think local fans uh, would be priced out at one time, at a t particular time, and then they would uh, seek for other venues for, for, for enjoying football? The, the, there is a, a basic problem that, that there are alternatives. If you don't go to football, you can do some other leisure activity, or you can go shopping with your family, or go to the beach and swim in, in the summer. Um, so, so there is always that competition there. There is no guarantee that numbers will continue. I think at the moment, the, the football is still so exciting. The players are the star players from all over the world in, in the Premier League. It's still a very attractive product, and they haven't yet pushed to the end of price elasticity. I think we're beginning to see a limit. We're, we're reaching probably the maximum level they can charge. Um, and that varies considerably from club to club. As, as a very rough guide, the London clubs, um, because London is a, a richer place, they're charging higher prices than the clubs in the north of England. So there you are know, very big differences in ticket prices between north and south within the Premier League. So I would say it is beginning to reach a limit. Um, we're already seeing fan protests about prices, especially from 
fund protests against high away ticket prices. Um, it's, it, it's not the rule everywhere, but in, in England, um, about 25 years ago, we changed to, instead of dividing ticket money 50-50 between the two clubs, the home club keeps all the money. So that's a particular reason why fans object to paying high ticket prices, because the money's going to the other club. Um, plus, of course, the, the fact they're having to travel. Uh, railway fares in, in England are very, very high compared with anywhere else in the world. So they've got high travel expenses. And because of television, they've now stopped having all 10 games at 3 o'clock on Saturday. There, there'll be a game at, on Friday evening, a game late on Sunday. It may not be possible to travel home after that late night on Friday. So you're having to get a hotel room for a night. So again, adding to the expense. So again, the fans are saying, well, we're paying a lot to go to an away game. We shouldn't then be giving that club high amounts of money. And the, the, the campaign is called 20's Plenty. And they're, they're trying to get every club to, to limit away ticket prices to 20 pounds. The Premier League have reacted. They've given money back to clubs to, to subsidise, to help fans at away games. Um, some of them are using it to, to bring the price down. Um, some of them are laying on free coaches, so they're cutting the, the cost of travel. So there is an awareness that we're maybe reaching the limit with uh, ticket prices. Um, just uh, this week, we have read about uh, a report that audience tv audience is watching the premier league on tv i mean tv audiences obviously uh uh dropped T tv audience figures dropped why, why do you think this is happening and um could this portend uh, some danger for especially i know this is mostly local like why is this uh, happening locally in the uk among uh, tv viewers well, I think it's because of the price of, of watching television, the subscription to the, the satellite channel. Again, like ticket prices, it's beginning to reach a limit where fans are saying, no, simply, that is too much to, to pay to watch the game. Um, I think it's interesting, this development of internet broadcasting. That makes the broadcasting rights in general more competitive, more people are bidding, so that will push the price up. Um, we will see people like Google and YouTube will start uh, internet broadcasting. Um, I think the impact will be on television. They will have to be careful about what they bid for. I suspect the income from television will go down, but then to the league, it will go up by the money they make from internet uh, broadcasting. So I think overall, it's not going to have a large impact. It might overall push the price up. Uh, because there is more competition. They will be fighting one at the broadcasting companies will be fighting one another more and more, pushing up the price they're prepared to pay. So it may end up with more kind of money coming into the sport. But I think the fan will have more choice. Either watch it on, on television at home where he pays, but yes, some will be going to bars to watch where they don't have to pay any extra to watch, or they'll watch it on their laptop. My final question would be um, the phenomenon that the Premier League has b become, uh, 92 when it started, uh, and I know you've been in, uh, writing about football for a long time and researching, and you must have seen it from the beginning. Uh, did you ever think uh, it was going to be this big, a uh, big phenomenon that uh, the world would all, you know, take uh, notice of and watch regularly like this? Do you th did you think it was going to be this really uh, big product for, for, for sport in the world? Well, definitely, yes, I thought it was going to be a big product. Has it grown bigger than I thought it would? Again, I'd have to be honest and say, yes, I didn't realize just how big it would become, how dominant it would be become. Um, and I think a, as an academic, it's interesting because in almost every sense, the Premier League leads in the good things that you might say, like how much money they get from sponsorship and broadcasting. But I think it also leads in how it could go wrong. Um, it also gives a bad example in that it tends to be quite reactive to fans rather than proactive. 
it doesn't engage very much with fans. It is very much going from sport to entertainment, and it's very much being driven by money, um, and I, I'm not so happy with that, but that's life. <laughs> And uh, we wish Portsmouth all the best <laughs> <laughs> for the future. Thank you very, thank you very much, Professor Vich. Uh, thank you guys for joining us once again this week. As the semester proceeds, we would continue to bring you the best brains in sports management in the world. Thank you. Bye bye.